This is the camera that I use to film Chris B's British Columbia mountain goat hunt. This is the Sony a7S III paired with a Tamron 35 to 150, which accounted for probably around 80% of this entire film. And it's honestly my main camera setup for all, all year, uh, no matter what I'm filming. And then kind of specifically for this hunt, I added a Sony FX3 top handle mounted to a small rig cage so I could have two channels of audio. Because on a hunt like this, where you know we're way out there and you can't really, you can't have things fail on you and have no backup plan. So having a wireless mic on top and a shotgun allows for two channels and that's kind of, A, it's really nice to have a wireless on your hunter so when they're whispering, you can still pick up audio or if they're facing a different direction. Um, but it's also extremely nice in case if one of the mics just randomly fails or if the wireless mic maybe ran out of battery or something or maybe water damage to the shotgun mic. So having two is, is just extremely important on kind of any bigger hunt or bigger video like this. The wireless mics that I'm running are the Sennheiser 112P Gen 4s and then the shotgun mic is a Sanken CS-1E. And I've been super happy with both of them. They both performed really well. And this Sanken is actually, um, I'm really impressed with it. It seems to cut through wind very well, produces a really you know, clear, clear sound, and the, uh, the wireless mics have been great too. So overall, I you know, really can't complain about any of it, and it all has performed really well. And it's still a pretty small package. Uh, compared to like a, a cinema camera like the FX6 or any, any type of big video camera like this. And also another really great feature is that I can still take photos unlike an FX6. And it's honestly, it's, it's not even that bad to take photos with. Like you, you can't put it to your eye because the handle uh, sticks past your viewfinder, but I, you know, I still took a lot of photos with this setup just like this and, and it works really well. And as well as having the 35 to 150, it allows me to zoom out to 35 to get wider shots of whether it's scenery or of Chris in this video, as well as still being able to zoom into 150 to um, you know, film a kill shot, which I don't, I don't think I quite zoomed in that far. I was probably only around 70 or 85 since he was only 30 yards away. Uh, but also being able to zoom into 150 for detailed B-roll shots or you know, mountain goat far away or something like that. And then the B cam was a Sony A7 IV with a Sennheiser MKE 200 on top and a Sony 16 to 35 lens mounted onto it. And having these two cameras as an A and a B camera for a backcountry type hunt like this is, it's honestly about as good as it gets in my opinion, because I can go all the way from 16 to 150 without having to swap lenses, which is huge for you know hiking. You don't have to stop, take off your backpack, dig out a lens and put it on just to take you know a couple photos or a couple clips and then have to stop and, and swap lenses again. So having these two to work with ends up being a huge time saver uh, and allows me to just get more shots too because I'm spending less time swapping lenses. And then the mic on top is still super small and compact and hardly weighs anything, has great battery life and still produces you know, relatively good sound for, for what it is. So this B cam, I mean, it weighs hardly anything and just, it works super well. Allows me to get super unique photos at 16 mil and video for that matter. And, and when it's hanging here on my shoulder, like you don't even, you don't even really feel it. So, especially when you have 60 or 70 pounds in your back, having this uh, definitely does not matter at all. And then to carry both of these cameras, I use these Peak Design capture clips, which they work, they work decent. They're not my favorite because I've noticed that if you get a lot of dust or it's mainly dust on this um, little base plate, it would start to slide into this capture clip pretty rough and then it would become hard to uh, to put it on the clip or to take it off of the clip, which wasn't great, but it also really didn't end up being detrimental. So something that I might actually test with or experiment with more in the future is the cotton carrier straps, uh, which don't have any sort of lock as far as like a mechanical lock like this. You just slide the camera in and then twist it 
so I might try those in the future. Um, I just, I really liked how minimal these peak design ones were, but after using them on this hunt, I don't know if I'll keep using them. Uh, I definitely need to test out the cotton carry ones a little bit more and try that out. But it's so handy and important to have some sort of way to hang both of your cameras on your shoulders without using a neck strap. Cause the neck straps are just a pain in the butt uh, when you're trying to, you know, get different shots or get a low shot or a high shot. And then, especially if you have two camera straps and then they're you know crossing over each other and getting in the way. So by all means, I'm gonna, I'm gonna avoid that. Next up was batteries. So this was scheduled to be a 10 day long hunt, which I'm so thankful it did not go 10 days because it was, it was hard, I'm not gonna lie. It was, it was extremely hard. 10 days would have, would, have, uh, would have tested us for sure. But knowing that it was 10 days, we had to come prepared and I brought 10, no, I think I brought 20 Sony batteries. I think I planned about two batteries per day. And then one huge mistake that I made is I brought so many AA batteries for the wireless mic. I planned on, I think, burning four of those batteries per day. So I think I brought, I brought like 40 AA batteries and threw them in the bottom of my pack. And that was just so dumb. That was so much extra weight that I had to carry for literally no reason. And now what I've learned from that is I'm gonna only use wireless mics when it's either insanely windy and I need something that can kind of get out of the wind or if we're on a stock because I will never carry 40 AA batteries. I think it was five miles through the gnarliest, rockiest, steepest terrain that I've ever hiked in. So, uh, I mean, obviously I, I knew my pack situation and gear wasn't gonna be perfect on my first ever backpack hunt like this. So something I definitely learned from this hunt was how important saving weight is when you have a lighter pack, you're just gonna feel way more motivated to, to run out in front to get different unique angles and to maybe even stay behind and then have to catch back up to get cool shots. And what I learned very quickly into this hike was I didn't really wanna move more than I had to because this dang pack was weighing me down so much. And when editing the film, I was like, man, I just, you know, hindsight's like, I wish I, I would have gotten a few more shots and I know that if my pack was lighter, if I didn't have 40 AA batteries, I probably would have got some more shots. So that's something that I definitely learned and I will carry into future hunts that I film uh, that are this style. And then I guess to kind of tie everything together, the pack that I was using is this Stone Glacier Sky 6900, which I obviously had these uh, clips on, which was awesome. It worked, it worked great, carried all of my crap and you know, it did its job, so. Super pumped with that pack, and this was the first ever hunt with it. Uh, literally the first time I think I actually wore it with any amount of weight was on this hunt. So, uh, no, it worked. It worked awesome. So these are the essentials in my filmmaking toolkit that I use to film this mountain goat hunt. Uh, these are pretty much honestly what I'd use to film any hunt for that matter. It's what I use in Utah and Colorado as well as all season here in Michigan. The setup has performed extremely well for me and I'll keep using it until, until they make a 16 to 200 f2.8 and then I will gladly buy that, but uh, I feel like that won't come for a while. So the 35 to 150 will definitely remain my go-to for, for all of hunting filmmaking. So if for some reason you haven't watched the Mountain Goat film yet, make sure to go watch that and leave me any feedback that you have, good or bad, and if you have any questions regarding camera gear or settings or what I use, um, you know, for any sort of my business, then just, you know, please leave them in the comments below and I'll be sure to answer them.